Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for checking out this video. If you're new here, I'm Siobhan. This is where I post videos relating to figure drawing and drawing dynamic and expressive poses. I tend to focus more on gesture and mark making rather than hyper exact or photorealistic drawings. So stay tuned and please consider giving this video a like if you're also interested in dynamic figure drawing. In this video, I wanted to just share with you some of my daily gesture drawing work that I'm doing in my sketchbook. These are just short two minute or five minute drawings of the figure. Like most people, I'm working from home these days and not being able to draw from life is a bit frustrating because I always say drawing from life is much more preferable than drawing from a photo, but nowadays what can you do? Usually I work with online resources such as lineofaction.com when I'm drawing from photo reference and there's also a very cool channel on YouTube called New Masters Academy and I'll leave the link below in the description and they've got great videos of the model in timed poses and what I like about their channel is that the poses are really really good well I think so anyway and that's what I was using today in my drawings so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the main differences as I see them between drawing from life and drawing from photo and how you can work around having to rely just on a photo reference and still keep your drawing fresh and alive and dynamic while working solely in your sketchbook on your own with your laptop. The main difference between drawing from life and drawing from photo is that drawing from a photo is way easier. When you're in a live figure drawing session with the model, um, there's just so much information coming at you. It's just really hard to translate all of that down into a drawing. But a photo is already a flattened out 2D image, and so a lot of that complication is actually taken away. But I think that the comp that complicated dynamic in a live setting is actually what makes a drawing from life so interesting. It, is often what infuses the drawing with a new dimension. So even though it's way harder, um, I think that that pays off in much more interesting ways. So how to work from a photo and still tune into that same kind of dynamic, that same drawing mode. So I think it comes down to mark making and Drawing a photo will often suggest that you use your mark in a really conventional way and just copy the image that you see. So my advice is to try and let go of describing the image of the figure in such, like, let's say, in such an obvious way. You can let your marks be a little bit abstract. Um, and above all, you can let some of the figure be unfinished. Like you don't have to draw absolutely everything that you see in the photo you don't have to capture every single detail. Often, if you let the drawing be a little bit more open, a little bit more unfinished and maybe a bit more suggestive, then it allows the viewer to respond in more ways than just in just one single way. So by that I mean, you know, I see a lot of uh, beginner life drawing students try to draw the whole pose from top to bottom, like, with one perfect outline and you know you don't actually need to you can focus on one single area of the figure for example the torso or you know the shoulder girdle or the back of the neck or something like that the way i'm working here i'm just trying to keep it loose i'm trying not to overstate some obvious things like the leg you know really just a mark or two to indicate where the landmarks are, like the knee and the ankle, is enough in a way to describe the pose or to describe the aspect or the gesture of the pose. And then I will spend a lot more time in areas like the torso because that's probably where for me the pose has its central dynamic quality.
So moving on, I did actually switch to a ballpoint pen for this next drawing. And the reason I did that is again to try and keep my mark making a bit loose. I felt like I was starting to get a bit hung up in details and a bit rigid. So what I do in those situations is allow the pen or pencil just to run free around the page. And with a ballpoint pen, that can work very nicely because there is such a fluid quality to, the, to that drawing tool in particular. So working like this, I just sort of allowed the pen to literally scribble draw, do scribble drawing around the page. And as I observed the photo and observed the form, then those scribbly marks sort of kind of, they sort of come into tandem with what I'm, with the way I'm observing, if you like. So once I've worked around the drawing in this loose way, then I can go back in and add finer details or pick out areas of the drawing that I want to state clearly or more clearly. And then I moved on to a third drawing, the session, and again, I switched back to my charcoal pencil. The way I always start out is I try to identify the uh, rib cage see the direction of the rib cage and how that's working compared to the direction of the pelvis. So what I did when I was looking at this video from New Masters Academy is that I just, I skipped through the poses that I didn't think were interesting. Um, you can do that if you want, you can be a bit more disciplined and watch every pose and try and draw something for every pose. But I, I find that there are certain poses that are a lot more interesting to draw than others. I like these seated poses. A pose that is just showing you the back can be challenging and that's almost a reason in itself to, you know, pause the video there and do those, those drawings, the ones where you just see the back. So these drawings took about maybe 10 minutes for these two pages of drawings. So that's not bad. Like give yourself a couple of minutes on each pose and, you know, before long, you'll have a few pages worked up of, very nice gestural drawings and your sketchbook will start to grow over time which is always nice because then you feel like you're accomplishing something um, you know as long as you just open your sketchbook I think that's the hardest part it's just getting it's just sitting down opening your sketchbook and then spending time to draw is actually easy this is the last pose for the session and I think I'll just speed up the video so that you don't you know, you can get to see the end result a little bit quicker. It's another seated pose of the model. Again, I'm trying to work out that dynamic between the torso and the pelvis. There's, in this pose, there's a definite uh, d difference of direction. So that's really important to get right straight away.
So the whole point of your sketchbook practice is that it is a practice. You don't have to make lovely, perfect, finished drawings in your sketchbook. You're working here to experiment with your own um, expression, your own mark making, and just to sort of build up a library of images that you can maybe one day fuse into your own visual language, which is very exciting. So I do encourage you to work in your sketchbook every day if you can. Leave a comment below if you've got any tips as to how best to get into a daily gesture drawing practice and um, if you've got any questions let me know as well. So thanks very much for sticking with me right to the end and watching this video all the way through. That means a lot. I hope you are inspired and motivated to open your own sketchbook and start sketching and drawing the figure. Um, please consider giving this video a like if you think it's worthwhile. Subscribe or stay tuned if you want to see more videos related to figure drawing and drawing in general. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.